afternoon or good evening, folks, as the case may be. We're back with another sports report. I mean, Gary Patterson and I are going to give you the straight scoop. Right. This is going to be like a Charles Dickens novel. It was the best of times <laughs> and the worst of times. Indeed. So we've been talking before we went on the air, and we're going to deal with the worst of times yeah. first. The Boston Red Sox. Disappointing finish. Very disappointing finish, right? Um, yeah. And it all started with that Mark Teixeira homer down in Yankee Stadium. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right? The night that they clinched and they all came walking into the clubhouse in shock. <laughs> and since then, they've played like crap. They have. Absolutely. Um, two, th two things that just jump out at me. The Red Sox are a fastball hitting team. Yes, they are. Uh, you get guys like Pedroia and Betts Absolutely. and Big Poppy uh, and Hanley that, man, you cannot get a fastball right. by those guys. So you faced three in a row, curveballers. Right. And Kluber probably has got the best uh, curveball in baseball. He might. Oh, at least the American League. certainly looked like it this week. Yeah. yeah. And he's got great control. He won the Cy Young three yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. He's a star. I mean, boy, I'm telling you, he's, uh, he's uh, not just a Johnny-come-lately. Yeah. And... But Tomlin and Kluber, uh, Tomlin and Bauer, rather, um, yeah. nobody will ever mistake them for Cy Young or Lefty Grove. No. And the Red Sox just rolled over and played dead. The, it's like they never saw a curveball before. Yeah. It was unbelievable to watch, actually. And, uh, you know, they took so many first pitch strikes that they just, they, they just take. Nobody was swinging at the pitch, and they were... Constantly down 0-1, 0-1, 0-1, 0-1. obsessed with this idea. They have to take pitches yep. because they want to build up the uh, right. pitching count, get the guy tired, maybe whack a couple of home runs off him and get him the heck out of the game. And Kluber's Kluber, but the other two, those first, some of those first pitches, they were right over the plate. And they just don't, you know, Pedroia goes so far as to almost look like he's stepping out as the ball's coming in. He's, yeah. he's, and the pitchers know that, and they just they throw a strike and... We don't swing, and I don't know why. If that so, was their strategy, to take that first right. pitch no matter what, that was a damn poor strategy. So back earlier in the summer, we were sitting here raving about the Chili Davis contribution to this team as the batting coach. And yeah, let's the, take those raves back now, off the table. <laughs> after we saw yeah. what we saw this week, it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder a lot. What um, happened to that team in June? It was attacking the ball. What well, even it, even happened to the team in August that was attacking the ball? Yeah, uh, that went on that long streak and went from four games out to four yeah. games up. Right, uh, and it, it and they were doing all sorts of marvelous things. Yep. lots of hitting to right field. Yeah, um, lots of aggressive base running. They were lethargic, and you know. The Red Sox went out of their way to s announce that uh, John Farrell's back. Yeah. Coming back. Yeah, there wasn't much well, of a, no doubt there, the I guess. The way the team showed up out there, just with all the emotion of a dish rag. Yeah. You wonder, what's going on? Yeah, I know. Uh, and John Farrell's always a popular po uh, subject for debate, right? Sure. It certainly is. But... As I said to you earlier, I, you know, I, I was struck after the game by how, when everything was over, how big Poppy stood up for John Farrell. I mean, he really gave him what amounted to a ringing endorsement yeah. after the well, game. If and, you know, it's a, where do you draw the line between the players and the, and the manager? Yeah. You know? Did so, you? So, I don't know. Um, John Henry owns the Globe. Yep. And he goes out of his way, supposedly to feed articles to the Herald. Yeah, Because he does that. not want to be accused of feeding everything to the Globe and they yeah. Yeah, one up the Herald and all that. His sense of fair play. Well, back in August, he held a press conference, uh, an interview with uh, 
uh, Silverman, uh, the beat writer yep. of the Herald. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, and it was so lengthy, it was two parts. It was one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. And he said, John Farrell, why would we fire him? He's doing a great job. Yeah. That's not on the horizon. I remember that. I do yeah. recall that, yeah. So am I surprised? Heck no. Yeah. It was already preordained. Well, it's interesting, you know, when Farrell gets criticized, it's usually for his in-game management, right? Exactly. He did this, he didn't pull this guy, he should have bad matchups, what, all that crap, right? So, yeah. and Dombrowski went out of his way to say that he thought in-game management was not the most important component of a manager's job. It was getting, basically getting your players to show up and play hard every day. Yeah, and, yeah. And you have to say, uh, for all the goods and bads, this team pretty much, except for the playoffs, pretty much showed up and played hard every yeah, day. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dombrowski said, you know, it's communication. Until they clinched. Then yeah. they went in the toilet. Six games. And they weren't, Five out of six and, games and they That's don't. where Farrell needs to grab him by the collar and have him up and yeah. ready for game one. And say, what are you guys doing to yeah. me here? Because they lost the home field advantage along the yep. way, which was huge, losing it the, that yep. last weekend. Yeah. And, and they looked and, as though, and they were. And they gave just Toronto going good. Through the they, motions. they provided good momentum for Toronto heading into the postseason. Well, Look know, at what Toronto's doing. Now that's another story. <laughs> I mean, the Rangers had the best record in the American yeah, League. They rolled right over. Yeah. Yeah. Holy jumping! When those moly. big bats start thumping, boy, yeah. it's one. It's there's a you know a number they, of them. That's a, got quite a, the line. They got it to what Tulowitzki gives them. You know, gave them. Yep. Another big bat last year when they brought him on board. That's paid dividends for yep. them. Um, th that's a tough ball club. Yeah. Now, the um, story is that um, Rogers' communications is tight with the buck. And they're not going to pay these inflated salaries across the board to all these guys. So it's very possible that Encarnacion, who is going to command the biggest well, yeah, paycheck of all, may walk. Yeah, they're not going to sign everybody, right? They've got Batista. Yeah, now Batista, Batista's an interesting problem. Yeah. I mean... I think the Jays are going to let him walk, Batista, yeah, because and they're going to try to keep the other two the, as a third I player. I believe... So uh, they have three free agents. Yeah. But the big two bats. Yeah. I think... Um, well, I think in Batista's case, I think the offer is $17.3 million um, to re-sign a... How many years? Uh, he's, what, he's well, 35, 36, uh, Actually, he? uh, it's... Uh, I think it's just one year, okay. but um, that's the qualifying offer that you have to qualify oh, okay. a guy with yeah. his years in order to uh, maintain. In, um, but that's a problem for his market value well, because he's 35, 36, and now you got to give up a first round pick to sign him. And um, the story out of Toronto was they were afraid he'd take the 17.3. Yeah, he might. And they don't want to pay him 17 yeah. points. They'd like to keep him, but they don't want to pay him the 17. Now, he had a lousy year this year by his standards. Right. See, I don't think the Red Sox bite on him. I don't either. He's, he's 35, I think he's 36. You know, even if you say, yeah. well, one year, 18 million, but you've got to give up a first round pick. That's right. Because of the qualifying offer? Yeah. I don't they think, don't do that. I don't think they do that. No. Not for him. They do it for a younger free agent. Yep. Maybe even a pitcher. That's right. But uh, now I don't see us dangling around with him. Now, I think Encarnacion is Big Poppy's favorite. I mean, he's worn that on his sleeve yeah. for the last four months, um, his buddy Encarnacion. So I think they'll go after him. I think they'll go after Trumbo. I think they'll kick the tires on both of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if they... If they feel they need a stopgap, the other guy that's out there that might be a little cheaper and could fit is Matt Holliday. Well, you know, that was in um, the Globe over the weekend. But, you know, he only batted 246 this yeah. year. 
And uh, he's getting a little long in tooth. Well, that's too. the problem with Batista, too, right? I mean, yeah. Batista hit 234, I yeah. think. You know, yeah, 22 and, or 23 home right, runs. So, but he's excellent defensively. He's got a great arm. Yeah, he does. Um, but We don't really need that, though. No, no, no. To us, we need to refill a, a, the a, DH. A, really? A DH role, right. yeah. Um, well, now. And, so I I don't get, think, I don't need, and I don't view that as the top priority. No. Because I think at some point next year, Moncada is going to come on the scene. Maybe mid, mid second half of the year. But to me, you, you're going to sign somebody, uh, all right. But and uh, and I, I, we'll we'll see what happens there. Yeah. To me, it's about pitching. That should be the top well, priority. You're, you're absolutely right. Is another yep. top of the rotation starter. We've been talk we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. And I think they gotta get two really they gotta get a righty reliever and a lefty reliever. I I, and I have see, shared and with, then you can see what happens yeah. with Carson Smith. Hopefully he comes yeah. back in the second half yeah. of the year and helps you. But if he doesn't, you gotta plan as if he doesn't. That's right, yeah. Right. I mean I, you they, know how I feel about Kimbrell. Right. Uh, he's the, just a disaster getting set to happen. But after watching the Giants game last night, wouldn't they have loved to have him last night? Right. So I think Kimbrell's going to be here. He's in your bullpen. I think Barnes is going to be here. And uh, and I think Robbie Ross is going to be here. And Kelly's going to be here. And Kelly's going to be there. And so there's Kelly four. has turned the corner. He's accepted he the role of a reliever, and he's working his way through it. Right. And uh, there's a kid that... He's men, got the chance to be really good in that role. He's got a chance to make a lot of money, too. Yeah. He's a, still a, a young guy. Inning, seventh, eighth inning guy. Oh. Throws 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Now, will the Red Sox play Don Ziegel? He's 37. What a 1.5 yeah. earned run average Yeah. with them? I don't know. It depends on the price tag and I the think, market. I right? think you're right. And the market. We know there's really no free agent pitching, starting pitching. Of None. You're going to overpay for crap. There are going to be some relievers that potentially you could sign. That's a couple of them out there. Yeah. You know. They're always is. So, so we, you know, we have four people we need to get one. I think, you, you know, you may have to look to trade. Tazawa's gone, right? Right. right. Um, and Koji, I mean, in my mind, he's gone. If you want to bring him back as the last guy in the bullpen, and who knows what happens, but to me, he's gone. To me, you got... Basically, four guys yeah. set. That you know, we just with went the strong through. arms, though, wouldn't it be nice to have Koji to bring uh, maybe. in as a change of pace? Uh, oh, and and that's fine. You want to sign him to something one year? Uh, yeah. Yeah, six million one year, seven okay. million I'd one year. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. But and if he's not with the locked in stone. Condition that he's your eighth inning. Oh reliever, no no though. no 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 no! Or even no. your seventh inning reliever. And you know what? If we get thirty-five or forty appearances out of him, yeah, and he stays more or less in one piece for the year, yeah, and his earned run average is three. Okay, so what's you, not to like so about that? you bring that him back now. You've got five spots filled yeah. back there already. So you need a lefty. So I'm not sure if there's a, a quality lefty reliever. No, there probably isn't. So never that, is. So that raises the question of, is Drew Pomeranz a, in the bullpen next year as that second lefty, and now you go find another starter? I tell you what, I wouldn't mind finding another starter anyway. That's the but, top priority. But Pomeranz gives you a, an additional bit of flexibility right. because he can pitch out of the bullpen. Right. And... Uh, with now, some rest, he can get it in there at right. 95. So here's the thing. I, I like the idea of having Price and Porcello as my two and three starter. We still want to get the guy, whether it's Chris Sale, whether it's uh, the uh, Sonny Gray in, in Oakland. I know he had a bad year. I know he had yeah. some physical problems. He's, do you think he's going to be okay? He was a really good young talent. So, but I think to do that, you're going to need to put a trade package together and and. You don't want Some to of trade. The you, don't want to, go. you don't want to trade the killer bees, and you don't want to trade Moncada. So that trade package, I think, starts with either Pomeranz or Eduardo Rodriguez, 
and one of your catching assets, whichever one the team wants. Do they want Swihart? Do they want Vasquez? Do they want Sandy Leone? One so of those catching Swihart assets. Swihart would be the last one I would trade out of that. Yeah, match. whatever. But I would almost say to the if it was Oakland, if you were convinced Sonny Gray was going to be okay, he had a bad year, he had some injuries, he's fine, he's going to bounce back, let's go get Sonny Gray. And maybe we can sign him long term while he's down and save a few bucks. Maybe. Right, so, and so what do they want? They want young, controllable players. And, and, oh, absolutely. Right? So yeah. you get both Pomeranz and Eduardo Rodriguez are still controllable, right? They sure Rodriguez are. Rodriguez for longer probably than Pomeranz. You throw in one of those young catchers, they're controllable and cheap for a while. Yep. And now you've got to throw another prospect. Well, that next prospect is not Moncada. But I would almost say to them, outside of Moncada, and that kid that threw 105 miles an hour. Yeah, and, and the number one draft choice. And the number one look. pick. Outside of that, you can have it pick. You tell me who you want. You can have anybody else. I'll in the tell system. you what. Um, I've seen enough. And we go get a, another number one starter. To I I think Moncada's future is in the outfield, and I just don't think he fits it with the Red Sox. Right. If somebody has been reading Baseball Weekly there or Baseball yeah. America and has decided, the, I'll fall in love with them too. Yeah. I would trade them. But depending on the package. Uh, depending upon the package. Yeah. I want a pitcher. I mean, he th I think he's potentially your long-term answer at third base. Right right now we've got a hodgepodge, a hodgepodge of folks over there. Yeah. Got to get rid of uh, Pablo. Well, yeah, he, he's going to be in spring training. That's, not a, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? you got to pay him. It's, you, know, you just oh, yeah. pay him off and tell him to screw. Yeah. And, and well, I think what you try to do is you try to get him in some semblance of shape. Maybe he's got a decent spring training and offer to pay half his salary and dump him. Right. That's a possibility. I'll, I'll maybe dump him along with a couple of prospects. Oh, you want a couple of our prospects? Well, you got to take the fat man too. Yes, exactly. We'll still pay half his money, yeah. but yeah, you gotta, exactly. You got to take him at yeah. nine million a year. Um, tell me something. Did the big poppy hoopla affect things? I think so. It seemed like it was a little much. I mean, it was even in even before the last weekend. I was joking with my wife. You know, hey, did you hear Big Poppy retired? I mean, it was just in overdrive. It was. It was potty time constantly. Right. And going around and hugging all these guys on the other teams, the old time old early win must be rolling in his grave when he saw that. Yeah. Well, you didn't do that with the enemy. Right. And, and you remember when Yaz retired, in fact, I happened to be there that day, and it was on, on the Sunday, and there was no playoffs. It was the last game, and Yaz was there, and they had a nice little ceremony to send him off. And then after the game, he ran around the field. I and remember that and well. At the people. And he ran, ro ro ran off into the sunset to a standing ovation, and it was wonderful. Got in the car and drove to New Jersey and never yeah. looked back. Big Poppy was like the World's Fair or something. Yeah. It went on for or the Olympics. It went on for weeks. For forever. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. If it affected things, but in my estimation, it certainly didn't help. Yeah. Um, you wonder if the players love Big Poppy, mm -hmm. but they sit, had to sit and sit through it all. Yeah. You know, at every last stop in the, the city, and you know, and your, you know, whoever you are, even if you love Big, Big Poppy to death, it had to get old. Yeah. You know, first you're doing it in Seattle, and then you're doing it in every city. Yep, every city. Right. And then on. And then you come home, and it's a three-day extravaganza yep. for the entire weekend. Yep. And Which, the, oh, by the way, that same weekend that you lose home field advantage exactly. in the playoffs. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it, that and the, getting uh, the bye where they didn't have to perform and say it was over on Sunday and they didn't play till Thursday. Yeah, um, the timing, the scheduling yeah. is, that, is... That that kind of caused a malaise, it seems to me, that yeah. sort of built on all the partying and it was just almost you know, like it was impossible yeah. to get back to business. Get back, your focus back. Yeah. yeah. It's like the kids in school, you know, they have the Christmas vacation and then it's a week back in school before the teachers can get their attention yeah. again. 
Um, yeah, they didn't seem like they had their focus. No. They didn't seem like they had their aggression. They were not no. an aggressive team. No. And you know, the and only they, person you know, that spoke out about it was Dustin Pedroia. Yeah. He blew his stack and said, we got to get down to business here. We're not playing properly here. Right. What's going on? But where was John Farrell? Yeah. Isn't that his role? You know, John is, I think, wants to be liked by all the guys. Right. And that's pretty normal. Yeah. Um, you, you know, yeah. He didn't have his team ready to play, and the offense. Right. The, but the and the offense was bad. But you know what? The defense was bad too. Yeah. And that was surprising to me because I viewed the Sox overall their defense as a plus going into the playoffs. Yeah. That outfield defense when Ben had yeah. left, the three of them outstanding. Yeah. Strength up the middle, Pedroia, you know, yeah. four-time Gold Glove winner. Yeah, he also wouldn't go between his legs. Right, he didn't yeah. want to go between his legs. Bogarts mis you misjudges the pop-up on the first yep. night when Buckholtz was pitching. It's like, oh yep. my gosh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> right, and Buckholtz managed to get out of that inning, and oh, you know, and Clay Buckholtz, as it turns out, was our best starter because he only gave up two runs yeah. in four innings. Yeah, yeah. Turns out that was our best start. That too. So it was. You know, so it, the pitching was not there, the hitting was not there, and the defense was yeah. not there. Why, Every phase. Why did he pinch hit for Ben and Daddy so early? Yeah, knowing uh, that Miller was their only lefty. Yeah. After Miller, it's only righties coming into the game. And you, you yanked him in, was it the fifth? Yeah, fifth, yeah. So two more at-bats. Now, he did still have Shaw on the bench, so he could go righty, righty, go righty, lefty, with Young, you know, Shaw, yeah. but Take Ben there. Attendee was one, is one of the very few people that had a decent series. Three for Holtz. nine with a home run. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you yank him, and then sure enough, the, it's those righties down the end, and, you know, yeah. who do you want up there at that last set bat, Ben Attendee or Travis Shaw? There you go. Well, we saw Travis, didn't yeah. we? And a feeble pop-up to right. Uh, shallow right field. And Travis would actually fit into that trade we were talking about earlier where yeah. we put in one of those two pitchers, yeah, one of the catchers, and Travis Shaw, because Travis Shaw is also controllable for a few more years. He is. He can play third and first. And, and another prospect, and go get Sonny Gray if you think he's healthy. Yeah. Chris Sale. Or Chris Sale. See, I don't think they'll move Sale. They don't have a lot going yeah. for them out there. Uh, right. And the White Sox are not a high spending team, but they no. do pay. Yeah. You know, it's not like Oakland. Oakland is Oakland doesn't Ch pay. El period. Cheapo Mucho. Right. So it's not it's not a question of if Sonny Gray leaves, it's when does Sonny Gray leave and what do they get for him. Yeah. And and the whole thing with him is what's the story with him? Is his health. Yeah. Right. Going into this year, he was considered to be one of the probably top five young stud starters. And I'm not, I, I'm not sure what his problem is. Is it shoulder? I don't know. I don't really know. He was on the DL. Yeah. I remember reading that it wasn't like he didn't tear a shoulder. He wasn't having Tommy John or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he was on the DL for at least one stint. Yeah. See, so you, you take a look at somebody like Steven Strasburg. Right. And you say to yourself, oh, God, if I spend... Mortgage my future to get this guy. Like two hundred and seventeen million, say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, it's on the disabled list half the time. Yeah. Yikes! That's not Pitchers good. Pitchers are risky. Um, I thought we'd have a little fun here with okay. the Boston Herald's staff predictions. Ron Borges, Red Sox in five. Steve Buckley, Red Sox in five. Uh, Evan Drellich, Red Sox in four. Yeah. Jason Mastronato, Red Sox in three. Michael Silverman, Red Sox in five. Wow. I would have picked up uh, in either four or five myself going into the series. Well, of course, I'm the guy that picked him not to make the playoffs. Yes, indeed, yeah. I was... And I still am concerned. There's too many hot and cold. Jackie Bradley Jr. is on that team. Yeah. Um, yeah. Including Pedroia, who gets red hot and then tails off, you know? Yeah. But the biggest uh, problem that I felt with the Red Sox 
was um, Bogart, and I've got it here someplace, but I think from August 1st to the end of the season, he batted 234. Yeah, he was, it was bad. And his ass was dragon. Yeah. He, now, if we can see this, if his bat slows, what's he doing out there? Yeah. Why don't you rest him for <laughs> a could, couple of games? You can see him wearing down. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, by the time you get to the end, and, you know, they had a, the three days off. That's not enough. It, it, it's, it's the weariness of the season. and It, it weighs you down. Right. You, that's why he needs days off in June and yep. May. And, of course. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right, but right. he didn't want to take him out of the lineup. Right. Because the kid was hitting over 300 and all that stuff. Well, we saw where that went. Right. Um, and do you have somebody to plug in there? Well, that's it. Exactly. The depth. So we got to come up with those guys. Um, th this was, was kind of interesting here. Uh, Dombrowski on the hook. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, managing through adversity. Wow. Farrell wins Being 93. here is not enough. Yeah. In other words, winning and getting into the playoffs, that's not, not enough. enough. He's going to get fired if they bow out. Well, all these guys were <clears throat> dead wrong. Yeah. So I'm beginning to wonder if you and I are just as sharp as they are. Well, it makes you wonder. Yeah, sometimes, you know, yeah. you say to yourself, what's going on here? So, um, so you know, the big question now becomes, what are they going to do, right? Yeah. We know they're bringing Farrell back. We know they're bringing the coaches back. Okay. What are you going to do with the roster? A comebacker. Dombrowski made the right call. Farrell to return as Sox manager. This is in the Globe. Yeah. So the writers are sucking up to right. John Henry because they yep. know he loves the guy. Um, yeah. But... And, you know, he's not a terrible manager. I mean, his, you know, like we said he's earlier. He's not a terrible guy. His, his players show, generally speaking, show up yep. and play for him. Hmm. Right? So the issue of how does he in-game manage, how does he manage the roster over the season, such as Bogart's clearly being worn down and worn out. And yeah. just, you look, I, you look at the Bogart's in that? May and June and look at the Bogart's in September and October two entirely different players. Totally and it's not because Bogart stopped caring, it's because he was worn down, right? Yep. And that's the manager. Absolutely. That's the manager. So, you know, but at the same time, he had a number of players who had career years under him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he had a world of patience with Jackie course, Bradley Jr. Yeah. <clears throat> when a lot of managers might have said, I can't stand this. Right. Um, Porcello had a career year. Porcello? Ortiz had a career year for yeah. crying out loud. That's, that will, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Right. And you're bringing and along this did... kid, Bentendo. Um, and, I mean, Mookie is off the Mookie's, yeah. off the charts. So Bradley how about, how tailed about, off. How about Hanley? And Hanley. Yeah. And resurrected Sandy Leone. Right. Yeah. So a number of things that, you know, he, he should really be able to take right. credit for. Yeah. Young players um, developing is a good thing. Yep. So does he deserve some criticism? I think he deserves criticism on Bogarts because clearly Bogarts was yeah, worn I, out. I was wrong. Uh, 2.34 from August 1st on. It was 2.30. 2.30 from, from August, August 1st on. on. There yeah. you go. So, I mean, that's a major but league nosedive. But you could just see dive. it. Just the way, yeah. watching him at bat. His body language, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's in love. I don't know. But um, I've got a couple more here to share with you. Okay. These, I like these. Yeah. World Series predictions. Now, folks, World Series predictions. Okay. I really enjoy the USA Today Sports Weekly, uh -huh. so much so that I subscribe to it. Uh -huh. This is a really worthwhile. I look forward to getting it every Wednesday. Yeah. 
Um, so here's the staff's World Series predictions. Okay. Ted Berg, Cubs over the Red Sox in six. Steve Gardner, Cubs over the Red Sox in six. Bob Nightingale, Cubs over the Red Sox in six. And Jorge Ortiz, Cubs over the Red Sox in five. Wow. Well, that's not going to quite work that out. That isn't going to work out. Yeah. There. All of them have blown it. Yeah. Because they all picked the Red Sox. Right, and the Cubs. And cool. guess what? Yeah, the Cubs are still in it, though. Yes, the Cubs, well, the Cubs have moved on they, after a spectacular oh, They won comeback. last night, yeah. Four runs A miracle, ninth. yeah. Four runs of the ninth. I think the Cubs are going to run away with it. Terrible. Yeah, they're, they have a good team, and they have a good pitching staff. Here's, a, here's Maureen Mullen. Red Sox poised to finish journey. Well, they're finished. They're finished is <laughs> right. But this is a good article, too, by Jay Paris. 2015 flameout motivates Rangers in drive for title. Yes, they're home, they didn't too. They really look three. Yeah. motivated. Toronto ran them over. Yeah. You know, I, I think... Texas may have been ready to go. It was just Toronto came in with the momentum. It's like a freight train. It looked train. like Minnesota Fats playing me. It's like trying to get up there and stop the freight train yeah. coming. They just got... Kabongo. Yeah. And, and blown away. And so, you know, I wrote my lead in before I looked at this. Off-speed excellence key for Indians. Yes. They tied the bloody Red Sox up in knots with all that off-speed stuff. Yeah. It's like they, I hate to come repeat myself, but it's like they never saw a curveball before. Right. Yeah. <sighs> it's unfortunate. Now, baseball's I, funny that way, though. You know, you get the momentum, all of a sudden the balls are dropping in. Yeah. You know, Big Poppy's sacrifice fly is in the gap, and the, both runs are scoring, and... You know, I got that, that ball that Betts hit in game three down that third, that bullet he hit down the third baseline yeah. right at the guy's feet. He came up with it. Come nice play. It. little snow cone action, but he did come up with it. That ball goes That's by exactly him. It's a whole right. different ball game. That's exactly right. You know, but stuff like that happens. That's, That's what the makes way baseball, baseball right. works. Yeah. Um, I love this one. This, of all of stuff I'm going to read to you, this is uh, my okay. favorite. Okay, number one. Analytical breakdown of all playoff series. Points to a title for the clubs. For uh, the cub, cub, cubs. For the Cubs, yes. For the Cubs. American League. Here's the prediction. Red Sox in three. In three. Rangers in four. Wow. Gee, they analytics we doing? did Those well, analytics didn't analytics they? Did huh? well. yeah. That's why you play the game on the field. Yeah. Never mind this nonsense. That's why Walt Weiss quit yeah. out to Colorado. Because the owner was screaming at him about analytics. The analytics. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The Giants are, you know, the Giants use analytics, but you know, they have ball players. Yeah. And you watch them play, and they, they ended up losing that game last night because they don't have a closer. You know, they went, analytics isn't going to do you any good. They ended there. up using, I think it was either five or six pitches in the ninth inning when they gave up the four runs. So it took about 45 minutes because he was out changing pitches with every single batter. And you know, you wonder too, some why the Cleveland Browns, for instance, continue to be terrible forever. Yeah. Forever because the ownership messes with them and gets right. involved in decisions. Arizona's no better. Mm hmm. Now, they have fired um, Dave Stewart, they fired uh, Chip Hale, mm -hmm. and they fired, um, what's his face, uh, uh, Tony La Russa. And who are they hiring? Well. Who's the new genius? They haven't decided. They haven't decided on, on, on the new genius, genius yet. yet. Yeah. But I'm sure it's going to be a beauty. Um, but, but you know, the... Uh, and I saw this. Uh, uh, once they fired Stewart, the team will be looking for its fourth general manager in six years. Yeah, that's. Well, how can you have continuity? That's unbelievable. And and Tony Larusso, um, 
He was never in a role like being the president of operations. Dave Stewart um, never really had a full-time job as a general manager, and Chip Hale never uh, managed in the majors. So they all were new roles. How old is Tony La Russa? Could he still manage? 72, 3, someplace yeah. in that ballpark. I'm sure he could. Jim Leland did. Casey Stengel managed uh, late. In the 70s? Yeah, but you know, I think what really a lot, whizzed, a lot of whizzed down. Yeah, the travel. There you go. A lot of travel. A lot of travel. Miserable, miserable now, travel. You know, you go in charter flights to a bus, so it could be worse. You're not waiting in lines. And, and you're, you're living in a um, beautiful air conditioned um, hotel and all of that. It's not like the old days where there was right. no air conditioning. Right. So, um, it could be a lot worse, yeah. but I think at 72 or 73, um, moving uh, every three or four days and on flights, and yeah. you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Come on, hurry up, the damn plane, that the charter has gotta go, it's got another charter after this, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's 72 or 73. If someone said to me, Bill, you wanna go back to work, um, you can, uh, I'll pay a double what you were making, uh, but you gotta, you know, no way in hell would I do it. Yeah. Just, right. That's it, I mean, I, that's not gonna do it. I, I couldn't do it. Right, yeah. So Larissa, you know, it goes back to the, to the uh, John Farrell, you know, she would replace him. And, you know, I just wanna, before I would do that, I would wanna know who you're replacing with. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, I always, thought a lot of Brad Osmus. Yeah. Um, he's a, a real straight shooter. Mm -hmm. The guys like him. Uh, he's very honest with them. And he's a bright guy. Now, um, if the Tigers had cut him loose, I might have said to myself, wait a minute. Uh -huh. so that's, this, a, that's a viable name. Yeah. But they get Tori Lavello and I've got to believe he would be out there shopping, uh, looking yeah. for a job. I mean, I would. He promised them last year that he wouldn't do that, but now, I think all bets are off. I think if somebody's interested in talking to him, I think he'd be interested yeah, in talking why not? to them. Why, why not? not? Right. He's not getting any younger. Farrell has an option, or the team has an option for Farrell for 2018, so he could be here two more years. Yeah. Without them renegotiating the contract, and who hmm. knows? Yeah, it'd be a lame duck next year, but yeah. Um, this is something I thought we'd talk about, but you know what? Uh, I think we'll put this one off for a while. But uh, drugs, drugs, players, players um, Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's an, it's an issue. It's an issue, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I've got a, the answer. There, uh, there is no easy answer. I don't think so. Right. No. Um. <coughs> Especially in baseball when it's such a historically statistical game. And you they, know. they really strive, too, for um, ethics. Yeah and playing the game right, and, and being the right kind of people and all that. Look at Shoeless Joe Jackson and, and Pete Rose and, yeah. uh, you know, hey, you guys are gone, Chick yeah. Gandal and the Black Sox Gandal. Right. You know, it's... Uh, the, the integrity of the game is important yeah. to them, yeah. yeah. Or at least they say so. That's what they say. Yeah. Well, mm. football Football, time. fine sport. Fine sport. By the way, for you hockey fans, I promise you, the next episode will be the Bruins okay. and the Celtics. Good. We've been neglecting Yeah, they're both them. in camp. They're both in camp. The Bruins start tomorrow night. Right. Uh, by the way, I have this. Uh, I have the next issue of this that just arrived at my house uh -huh. shortly before I came up here. My wife went to the post office. I got the Bruins picked for third in the Eastern Division. Really? Third. Third. 
eight teams, and they got them in third place. Huh. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. You got Montreal ahead of them and um, Tampa Bay. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, hey, before we get to the Patriots, which this will be the... Uh, uh, the best of times. Yes, the best of times. Yeah, we're good. done yes, with the done. worst of times. Good, good. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of other things I want to talk about real quick. King Philip football. Yeah. Five and zero. Oh. Uh, good for them. How about King Philip boys soccer, rated third in the state? Third in the state. Eleven wins, no losses, one tie. Wow. Yeah. So that's extraordinary to have yeah. two, two good teams like that, yeah, in the same season. And speaking of extraordinary, I think anyone that listened to me last time made a bundle on Ole Miss. Oh, yes, I recall that discussion. Yes, they, yes. Uh, they uh, beat uh, Memphis by 20 points, and the spread was 14. And I'm very happy to tell you, that um, they are seven and a half right now over Arkansas uh, for Saturday. They had a bye week. Um, and, and Arkansas played Alabama last week, so yep. they got slapped around. Yep. And, um, boy, I'll tell you, that uh, I think we'll make a bundle on Ole Miss again. Yeah. Uh, they're, I think, third in the conference in passing. Is that a home um, game for Ole Miss coming up? You know what? I think it is. Yeah, uh, I like them then. Um, and now the tragedy of it all. Southern Connecticut, 35, Pace, 16. Wow. And that was last week. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Last week, Bentley, 28, Pace, nothing. <laughs> Pace, Pace is now 0-5. And they're 0-4 at home in Waltham. Is that right? Yep. It's a tough year for Pace, huh? I'm telling you, they are, uh, they're not doing well. <laughs> I love the Pace because I love the nickname of the team, the Setters. The Pace Setters. setters. Yep, I love it. <laughs> um, the Las Vegas odds makers yes. are usually they are great. They, they know how to make money. Yep. So... In last week, um, they um, six favorites won and seven underdogs won. So, so there were a couple of pushes. The um, no, they all had, had halves. Oh, because of the bye weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, so interesting. In 14 games last week, the home team was favorite 12 times. I'm sorry, that's this week. That's this week. The home team is favorite 12 of the 14 games. Okay. So. The two exceptions are who? Uh, yeah, by chance. Philadelphia is favored over Washington at Washington by two. Huh. And Pittsburgh is seven and a half over Miami at Miami. So, let's see how you and I do. Okay. New York Giants, home, three point favorites over Baltimore. I'll take Baltimore. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans, uh, home. Against Carolina, but no spread. Pick it. A pick them? New Orleans and Carolina? In New Orleans? Do you know if uh, Superman's back? I don't know, and I think that's why uh, it's, it's a pick, a pick em. Em. You know? I'll take Carolina. I think they need to bounce back, get a win. Yeah, um, I'm going to uh, take uh, New Orleans. Yeah. I, I, uh, one in four, Carolina. They're on the skids. Yeah. Uh, home. New England, eight and a half over Cincinnati. It's up to eight and a half. Yeah. Oh, boy. I actually would like Cincinnati to cover that spread, probably eight and a half. I'm taking New England. 
Uh, That's a lot of points. Patriots are rolling. Yeah, they are. Um, Tennessee is at home in the seven and a half over Cleveland. I'd, I'd take Tennessee. I'd take yeah, Cleveland's you and me both. Got a um, they got a quarterback problem. Now, Chicago at home, two and a half over Jacksonville. Brian Hoyer is becoming quite a story. Yeah, I, I, I would take Chicago yeah, in that game. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, home, Detroit, three over L.A. I'd take Detroit. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, Philadelphia, on the road at Washington, and Philly is a two-point favorite. Huh. I'd take yeah. Washington. Yep. Me too. Pittsburgh, seven and a half, down in Miami. Pittsburgh favorite seven yep. and a half at Miami. I'll take Miami. Whoa! I'm taking the points. Miami I'm, needs to do something. Yeah, I think probably um, get a new quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, they have a new coach, and he's had five weeks now, and here's a big game yeah. at home. Asking, Let's see what you got. They're asking him. If he's going to change quarterbacks, he yeah. says, "You can ask me that a hundred times," yeah. and the answer is no. I'm only asking them to cover seven and a half points. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. You, do I think they'll win? Probably not. But can they lose by four? I think so. You know, if they were playing somebody other than Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah, I think Pittsburgh will perhaps run this I'm one. I'm going to take the. I'm going to take those points. All right. Uh, at home in Buffalo. They're seven and a half over San Francisco. I'd San take, Francisco is going to take, uh, that's a wise move, me too. Um, they're starting Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. yeah. We'll get to Colin. This is Buffalo's run. They're going to um, have a little run and they're going to flop Oakland back to earth. Oakland and Kansas City. Oakland at home against Kansas City, it's a pick -em. Is it really? Mm-hmm. I like Oakland to bounce back. They, did they lose last week? Didn't they lose last week? No, actually, they won no, last they won. week. They won yeah. last week in a close game. I, I'll take Oakland at home. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Kansas City. Um, at home, Seattle, six over Atlanta. Seattle. Yeah, you and me both. Green Bay four at home, four over Dallas. Oh, boy. I'd take Green Bay. Yep, I'm with you. Houston at home, three over Indy. Huh. Wow, I don't have faith in either one of these teams. I'll take Houston. Okay, I'm going to take um, Indy. Uh, and finally, we got another pick -em. At home, Arizona and the hapless New York Jets, who are coachless. Todd Bowles has lost his mind. That can't be a pick -em game. At There's Arizona. No line. There's no line. Yeah. Yeah. I think Arizona's going to win that game. Yeah. I think they've got I don't know what the spread's going to be. So I would say that the spread, I don't know what they're waiting for. What are they waiting for in the spread, do you know? Is it one of the quarterbacks? I mean, it's why are they It's got to be a key injury. Yeah. Because uh, without that, I would say that's got to be a Arizona by seven. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not sure. There was no explanation as to okay. uh, why it was what it was. Um, I right, so you will track results against those picks, I take it. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have the <laughs> results. Um, Bennett and Gronk as tight ends. Wow. Because in receivers. Have you seen two tight ends on the same team that can block and no. receive the way those no. two guys? They, uh, they look terrific. Bennett's going to have a, a, a world-class year because Gronk is going yeah. to get double-teamed right. until finally they're going to have to change their defenses to deal with Bennett. Then Gronk you know, will be so You know what makes great. me really happy about this, quite frankly, is Bennett and Gronk are, going to be, are the best pair of tight ends we're going to ever have on this team. Yep. We're no longer going to have to hear about, well, back when we had Aaron Hernandez and Gronk together, it was pretty awesome. No, this combination of Bennett and Gronk together is going to be better, significantly better.
than what we were with Hernandez and Gronk, which the, was good. It was good. And, he brought, and you know, the best thing Hernandez offered was the maneuverability of a running right, back. Right. He, he could yeah, run, he could, he could catch, he could yeah, go deep, but, he could... Yeah, but uh, he was not that good a blocker. Right, no. right. And in terms of overall contribution to what I think is going to, if they stay healthy, is going to be a, a really powerhouse offense. Absolutely. Josh McDaniels. Yeah. This Is this his last year with the Patriots? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 he seems not to be in any rush. He likes being here with Bill. I think he knows he has one more shot. Yeah. And he sh needs to be very careful where when he leaves here and where he leaves here for. And Agreed. because I think he's got one more shot yeah. at being a head coach. And, you know, it does play a little bit to how long do you think Bill's going to be around? He's 64. Yep. You know, I'm thinking he's going to be around four more years probably or something. I think he's going to be around as long as Tom Brady plays. I think he's going to be around longer. And then... It'll be game by year by year. Yeah, because he wants to do it without Brady, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, leads to the Garoppolo question of what's the deal with Garoppolo? Does, yeah. Does Bill think Garoppolo's the guy that Bill can win in, say, five years when he's about to turn 70? That he can go out because Brady will be gone by then. Yeah. And can he? will he have his last two or three years with Jimmy G at quarterback? Yeah. Yeah. And can he and does he think he can win a Super Bowl? Now, according to this article of course he does. by Ben Volan, um, McDaniels turned down three um, teams that wanted to interview him last year. Yeah. The Browns were one. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's in here someplace. I just can't find it immediately. Were the Colts one? Don't know. He needs to go where there's a quarterback. Yeah. He, if he has to go in and job one is bringing in a new quarterback. The Browns, and the Falcons, and the 49ers. Uh, he interviewed with them. I'm sorry. And turned down interviews with the Dolphins, the Giants, and the Titans last offseason. So he turned down... The Dolphins, the Giants, and the little, Titans. A little surprised by the Giants. Yeah, good, major market. Good ownership. Yeah, Maris have been uh, yeah. with the you know the program since the year one. And you've got you know for the next five years probably you've got Eli. Yeah. Who's won? He's he's a he's a zip ahead sometimes. Yeah. But he's won. He's got a good arm. You can win Super Bowls with him. They've yeah. won two. Yeah. So. I, I don't... I'm a little surprised by that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think I, he will. He's going to go to a, some place that has a quarterback. I think you're absolutely right, and I think it'd be crazy not to go. Right. He doesn't need to go get involved in a rebuilding deal yeah, he doesn't for need to four go to Cleveland. years and drafts and all that. Right. And, uh, and not even Tennessee. You know, maybe Tennessee in a year or two, once Mariota's had a chance. and you, you, Gets himself unwound. You yes. see whether the kid's actually a player. Yeah. <gasps> Or not? Yep. But um, I don't know. Uh, I think he'd be. I think he's probably getting paid quite well. He's getting paid very well. I think his family's happy here. I think yeah, his kids got, are here. Yeah, he's got four kids. He's got a lot. Yeah, he's got a four kids. Four you know ages, ages, four to twelve. Yeah, right. That and, that age where there's to move them is such a traumatic yep. traumatic thing to them. I he's got a think, good deal here. He likes working I would for Belichick. Think that he would be wise to sit. Right, and continue with Belichick. Yeah. Why does he want? I, well, of course, you know what? If somebody offers him four and a half or five million dollars right. a year for five years, well. But you wonder if, in his his mind, if it is related to his family a bit, and is you know, and he doesn't want to move in the next three or four yeah. years because. His family, and what's there to actually, the only reason to move is to be a head coach. Yeah. He's got a great situation here. He's well paid, yep. he's well respected, his family's happy. And now, if you say, I don't want to move for three or four years, now you are in, in a window of Bill Belichick retiring and potentially taking over here. There's you and Jonathan, of that. You and Jonathan yes. Kraft can take over together. Yeah, wouldn't that be sweet? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Clemson uh, did a number on BC. They sure did, yeah. Six to ten. And I was looking at the upcoming schedule for our boys on Chestnut Hill, and uh, it's, boy, it's not getting any better. They got uh, number seven Louisville coming and number yeah. 14 Florida State. Uh, they could be in for a rough time. Yeah, so they did win one game because they played a cream puff. They, put, they won three games and there was all cream puffs. Yeah. What, UMass? Butler and uh, yeah. some other, geez, I don't even, I never even heard of them once. Yeah. It was, uh, but it's uh, grim and, uh, you know, the, uh, a tough place to coach. Yeah, and they just signed to play in 2021 and 2024, home and away with the University of Missouri. Now, the Wildcats are a hell of a tough team. Wow. Couldn't they? Find? Interesting. Yeah. I, I, do they well, really? Well, it's all about can they get the talent? Yeah. Can Boston College get the talent? Yeah, that's it. Can they recruit? Right. Yeah. yeah because it's they have some standards yep. that are maybe not in place at Missouri, you know. Yep. By the way, my uh, Ole Miss uh, Rebels are uh, 3 and 2, and they're ranked 12th. Wow. Yeah. They're the only ones. Uh, you got to drop down to 19 to find Oklahoma at three and two. Huh. Um, well, your buddy Todd Marinovich. Remember Todd, Todd Marinovich, yeah. USC, uh -huh. LA Raiders. Yeah. Allegedly tried to enter a stranger's home naked in August. Uh, prosecutors filed misdemeanor charges accusing the 47-year-old Irvine, California resident of trespassing, public nudity, possessing meth methamphetamines, methamphetamines yeah. and drug paraphernalia. He could face up to three years in jail if convicted. Now, that would make him 50. I think his career is over. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Do you think? I think that that probably yeah, nails us. Not looking too good for. But you know what is Todd sad Marinovich. is there's stories like that three times a week in yeah. the paper. Ex football players, ex baseball players that are in tremendous yeah, yeah. amount of money that are as yeah. screwed up as Hogan's goat. And broke. Uh, yeah, and broke. Look at Antoine Walker. Right. $106 million and he hasn't got a penny. Yeah. Amazing. <clears throat> On that note, folks, next time we'll be talking about the Celtics. Maybe okay. even yeah. mention Anton. Yeah, I'd like to talk about the Celtics. Yeah. Sure. And the Bruins. On the way up. So we want to wish you a very happy beginning of fall. Um, go out there and see the colors. Indeed. And um, see if you can forget about the Red Sox. Right. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Good night.